Marley taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world. On Newsfeed today, Boris wins big, Corbyn loses big. We look at how social media gave a false impression to millions. Protests in India over the controversial citizen amendment bill that's being called anti-Muslim. The signing of an executive order by America's president makes Judaism a race akin to a nationality, not just a religion. And dogs went to vote in the UK and animals doing stuff. And to top of our news feed, the UK electing Boris Johnson again. It was the most social media run campaign to date, replete with lies and misinformation. And for the loser, a reality check. Despite Jeremy Corbyn's seeming popularity on social media, IRL, the public turned away from him and his ideas in near record numbers. Here's Faisal. On social media at least, Jeremy Corbyn was going to win the elections and lead the country. But in the real world, he led Labour to their worst defeat since 1935. The Labour Party claimed they ran the most successful social media campaign ever seen. Analysis showed that Corbyn had achieved four times the views that Boris Johnson's campaign had generated. Jeremy Corbyn was the man, the meme, and the myth. His video messaging appealed to the millions of millennials and the Generation Z. He even joined the 60-second challenge to talk about Labour Manifesto. I'd take just 60 seconds to run through as many of the policies as I can. And read out meme comments as well. The next Prime Minister. It even got celebrities to back the Labour in the elections. Between November the 6th and December the 3rd, Labour spent an average £26,000 a day to reach their audience. The party has seen its reach on Instagram grow by more than 50%. Insta has the largest user base of British voters under 40. Corbyn's Facebook posts were shared three times as often as compared to Johnson's, despite the Tories spending over £80,000 on Facebook ads in the run-up to the elections. Regardless of Corbyn mania online, in real life, the country was less than taken with the MP for Islington North. Reality caught up with the Corbyn cabal and handed the Tories their biggest victory since 1987. And a clear mandate to do what they like with Brexit. Will at last be able to do what? We've been paying attention. Some followers of Corbyn are now using their online platforms to blame everyone but the man who leads them. The election may be over and the echo chambers on the internet for British politics seem to be getting stronger. OK, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Well, this video of trash washing up on a beach in Durban, South Africa, is being shared widely. An account called the Litterboom Project posted it. They're a campaigning group working for cleaner oceans. They blame informal settlements along the coastline. 16-year-old Greta Thunberg, the activist and Time Person of the Year, was attacked by the President of the United States on Twitter. He tweeted something and she, in an adept judo move, used it as her Twitter bio. She's done this before when attacked by adults on social media, using their vitriolic words as a description. Her new bio reads, a teenager working on her anger management problem, currently chilling and watching a good old-fashioned movie with a friend and images of the Nike swim hijab are being shared and commented on online. It's the first attempt at modest swimwear by the brand and will likely be very, very popular. And to Mumbai now, where Radhika has the latest on the reaction to the controversial citizen amendment bill, which some on social media have called anti-Muslim. In a 
some people feel strongly against the government paving the way to grant illegal immigrants from Bangladesh Indian nationality. They say doing so puts a strain on limited resources and will also threaten and marginalize indigenous communities. There was a partial shutdown on internet services in parts of Assam, but that hasn't stopped people from coming out on the streets and protesting against the Citizenship Amendment Bill, abbreviated to CAB, on social media. There are some really powerful images being shared online with hashtags like CAB protests and Assam rejects CAB. In Assam's capital, Guwahati, a curfew was unable to stop thousands of demonstrators from raising slogans and moving towards the chief minister's office. There's been fake news around the protests as well, like a video that was shared claiming to show police excesses in Guwahati. Police firing at protesters has enraged many people, but turns out that the video is two years old and actually shows a mock drill in a different Indian state. Outside of Assam and other cities and on social media, there's been outrage against the government and India's Home Minister Amit Shah. He's at the centre of many memes, like this one, where he is seen welcoming illegal immigrants, but throwing a matchstick behind him that's burning the rest of the country. There's also commentary around how critical issues like unemployment have been ignored, but giving citizenship to non-Muslims is top of mind. But there are those who support the government's decision as well, like one user who wrote, those who were crying that India is not safe for Muslims are now crying that why doesn't India open its doors for other Muslims, hypocrites. One tweet posed a question to India's political parties, saying, political party opposing cab bill, which will rehabilitate exploited Hindus and minorities, I want to ask you, aren't Hindus human for you? Or are you worried about vote bank politics? The Indian Prime Minister has also tweeted, assuring the people of Assam that they have nothing to worry about. He also says that Indian political parties are spreading lies about what the bill means for Muslims in the country. He says that no citizen of India will be affected by this new law. Those words so far have not been able to quell worries that citizens have. And the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, signed a controversial executive order recently, which has caused some anger on social media. Have a look at this. Let's keep on spinning right around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Friday. Well, more women have come out to accuse the actor, Hubert Gooding Jr., of sexual assaults. He denies all the allegations that have so far been levelled against him. Seven women have now submitted evidence to courts of unwanted, unwanted touching and kissing by the actor. The allegations date from 2003 to 2016. Hubert Gooding Jr. is due back in court in America in January. And a man in America who struck a woman on the bottom as she was doing her job, a live report for the local news, and he was running in a race, faces being charged for his actions. The reporter, Alex Bazajian, has filed a sexual battery report with the local police in the state of Georgia. 
And Facebook has predicted some trends for 2020, and they are ridiculously first world, like taking milk baths, being a flexitarian, and listening to podcasts. Also, apparently for those who can afford which area they want to dress like, the 80s are it. So polyester and other man-made fabrics are to see a resurgence, which is kind of recycling, I guess. Now, the street artist Banksy is influential, provocative and successful. Some people have wondered just how he makes his money. So we took a look at that. Is Banksy rich? He's arguably the world's most famous street artist, and some online sources say he nets around $20 million a year. But is this true? And if so, how does he make his money while keeping his anonymity and opposing commercial success at the same time? Spoiler alert, Banksy doesn't make money through his record-breaking prints or wool pieces sold at auctions. Last October, Banksy's devout parliament was sold for a record price of $12 million and broke his own record multiple times. And how much did Banksy get from the original sale? As far as we know, nothing. For the last few years, all proceeds he gets from a private buyer goes to charity. As a vocal anti-capitalist and someone who thinks art is for everyone, Banksy discourages people from buying his work. Graffiti art has a hard enough life as it is, before you add hedge fund managers wanting to chop it out and hang it over the fireplace. For the sake of keeping all street art where it belongs, I'd encourage people not to buy anything by anybody, unless it was created for sale in the first place. The world even witnessed the shredding of one of his paintings after it was sold for $1.4 million at an auction at Sotheby's. The shredded piece is now probably more valuable as it was the first time such an art stunt was performed. The secondary market is the only place where you can purchase a Banksy these days. The last time someone could buy a primary market Banksy was in 2013 and nobody was actually aware of the fact that they were buying authentic Banksy's. There was this one-day Central Park pop-up selling 100% authentic original signed Banksy canvases for $60 each. It only attracted three buyers and eight paintings were sold, totaling $480. But then there are the wall pieces, the graffiti art that has been central to Banksy's fame and that's where things get really interesting. This wall painting titled Donkey with the Soldier on the separation wall in Bethlehem was stolen. Yes, an almost four-ton wall was removed by builders, popped up on eBay and was then bought by a Danish collector for $100,000. The collector tried to resell it at an auction but was unable to do so. So back to our first question, how does Banksy make money? Banksy's Academy Award-nominated documentary Exit Through the Gift Shop provides an income, as well as his dystopian hotel, the Waldorf Hotel, overlooking the separation wall that he opened in Bethlehem. The hotel is almost always fully booked and room prices range from $60 to $480 per night. His book Wall and Peace, which was published in 2005, was still selling around the world. In the 90s, at the very beginning, people were buying his prints to use as posters for very low prices, without even knowing that they might be worth thousands of dollars in the future. By the late 2000s, the art world had realized Banksy's popular appeal and many of his works had been removed from their original public settings to be sold. About 10 years ago, Banksy was selling directly through certified dealers at exhibitions or through his former printer's pictures on walls. But pictures on walls closed down after a while because it was making too much money. Banksy strives to be an artist for everyone, not just for the elite class. But will art collectors taint his intended legacy? And last up for us today is some animals doing stuff. And what these ones are doing are going to the polls in the UK. Now here we go. This one was leading Alexander Boris Defeffel Johnson into a polling station to enter a vote for himself, I guess. He did win overwhelmingly. And here are some others. Now, people seem to think it was fun. That's the mayor of London there. Fun to share pictures of their pooches. Perhaps for some, the best part of yesterday's election. That'll do you from the Newsfeed team. Do reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24 seven on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel and follow me on Twitter. Follow, subscribe, and add, and I will see you again very soon.